Good morning everyone. So today we're going to be doing a combi project where we're combining over, or some, some people like to call it a mixed media project, two different mediums. Now I'm going to start off with a drawing, very simple drawing, and then I'm going to turn that into a watercolour, which is why I've got my pans here. You could obviously use tubed watercolours, it's absolutely fine to use either. Then we need to allow it to dry and then we're going to move into doing the pastel va va voom kind of layer of colour and detail. You can see here there's a whole selection of materials that you're probably going to want to get out in preparation. First of all I've got my A3 sketchbook which is 300 GSM paper. I then have my watercolours over here, it's a standard studio set that I've added a few more extra to. And the colours that you need in watercolours obviously relate to the reference image. So I've got my reference image over here. Now I've also got my watercolour brushes up there and two pots of water. One for cleaning the brush, one for doing my washes. And then once that watercolour layer is dry, which means I usually always need a tissue because it has a habit of running, I've got my pastels. So I've got my pastels in stick form and I also have some pastels in pencil form so that I can play around and build up a little bit more detailed in a controlled manner. Now that I've explained that, let's get on with the project, shall we? Now, if you're feeling a bit more confident and want to go renegade, you do not have to do this drawing stage. This is purely if you want to get something a little bit more accurate and detailed. It's handy to have the main structure drawn down onto the paper. I've got my reference images over here, who kindly donated by Jenny's son. And anything that looks like this is a really nice easy pitch to set up for a drawing. First of all we need to establish the horizon line, okay, and we can see that there. Now if I use my pencil and my fingernail, I can check that it's slightly shy of halfway down, okay. So that means I've got to bring a line down halfway down. Then I've got two mountains, so I can put the mountains in and the mountains here. And then I've got this triangle format of the trees to the right and a triangle format of some reeds to the lower left. Really simple. Alright, let's get going, shall we? Now, before you always do a picture, you need to double check the aspect ratio. So, I'm lining up the reference image into the bottom left hand corner of my paper. I'm drawing my line through the bottom corner down here to the top corner up here. I'm looking at where that comes off in relationship to my sketch pad. Okay, and that means that I need to trim off that excess at the top. So if I just hold that paper because that's going to go. Do this slowly or you're going to get paper cuts. Yes, I'm probably not having the water jug there. Is a... You can obviously use a ruler but I'm being uber lazy. Now that I've done that, I'm looking at finding out the halfway up my sketchbook which by eye is about there. Now remember, this is slightly lower than halfway, it's about there. So if I make that mark, and again, use my nail to run along the bottom of my sketchbook to give me a horizon line. Easier because, you know, when you're out and about, you don't usually want to carry everything with you. So now that I've got that basic line across here, I'm going to slide my hand down and put that in. Then I'm going to look at creating these mountains. Now, in the middle of the picture is probably about there. Again, you could measure it, but I'm just doing it by eye. That means there's some right mountain, so it's just sits shy of middle of pictures. So in the middle of the paper is about there. Again, you can measure, I'm just doing it by eye. And that means I've got to put in these mountains here. Uh, I've got one here. Now with this technique, you can be really freestyle. It doesn't matter if you don't get it perfect. It's just about getting a base structure that you can then use to build up some information on. Do remember though, whatever you've got working up here, you've got going on down here. Now, you've got these tree lines that's just sitting along here. That's coming up there. I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't because it's a very light pencil. Uh, if I too dark, it's going to come out with a picture, but you'll see what I mean. I'm going to then slide my hand up here. Let's get, get these mountains in. It's a very hard pencil. I wonder if I've got something softer actually. Okay, so this is a little bit of a 
a softer pencil. Funny, they're both going to be HBs, but you know what it's like with HBs? Or of any shop. Pencil grades are just like clothing sizes. They're different in every store, even though they're going to be the same. Right, so let's get that mountain in over here and flowing down there and then we've got this other one that's sitting slightly lower and let's, have a look for, let's have a look at that one yeah, that's not much in it actually that comes down and then we get some lumpy bumpy sections we've got a little bit of seeing in here that's kind of sweeping up there now we then have some lower banks which increase with the tree size we also have the trees coming up to the right hand side and along there and there's some that come up higher but i'm just setting out a rough boundary at this stage now we take a look at this so i'm looking from here to here in relationship from there to there in reflection from here to here there to there yeah the reflection's a little bit shorter this is harder to do on a camera I can normally just turn the book upside down. Sometimes it's easier for something like this to not see your mountains, but to see the pattern that you want to create. So stand back and give yourself a little bit more of that perspective to really help get something more accurate. Okay, you see that starting to build in? Right, now, oops, just a start thing. Um, let's get some detail slapped into this picture. Uh, let's bring up this bank here. And we're going to have our tree line in here. So I'm going to keep it fairly simple because I'm going to be covering a lot of this up with paint and then anything that doesn't get covered up with paint is going to get covered up with pastels so it really isn't worth putting too much energy into it um, and then we're going to have our flowers that kind of come in poking on this right hand side which again like I said I'm going to just freestyle it you could be really accurate I uh, probably will be when I'm putting in the pastel layer, but at this stage it's going to get just obliterated. Remember, whatever you do up here is being reflected down here. So we've got those long, taller trees just there. Okay, we've got our water, we've got our trees coming up here as well. few short ones and some longer ones and we've got a few little kind of mountains poking out from down the back just like so um, and down here in the valley we've got a few kind of lumps and bumps in the shapes and the shadows being cast on those hills and mountains okay no more lines my lines are a bit darker than they should be, but it's because I want you to be able to see what I'm getting up to. What you need to do once you've done your main drawing is to go around the drawing with an eraser. I would recommend using a potty eraser. I can't find one at the moment, but so a traditional will do the job. But a potty will make sure that you're not causing any damage to the watercolour paper fibres and it'll give you a nice clean result of pigment it's pretty much impossible from my experience of removing pencil lines from underneath a, a painting a watercolor painting it's going to just start causing real problems so it's always wise to get any of those pencil lines that you don't want out at this stage you'll 
find you'll be fine. Freestyle there a bit, don't worry too much. Okay. It's nice to have a bit of bleed and serendipity in the work. Don't be too contrived. Okay, let's get that down there. Now, we've got to get the watercolour layer in. Uh oh, she says. We're going to go probably top to bottom. Sounds like a good idea. Using a big brush. Oh, this is quite a nice brush for applying large areas of colour. You could do this in washes if you wanted to. I thought I'll just really freestyle it. Like I said, you've got to remember that this is going to end up getting covered up by a lot of pastel work as well. Oh. Don't worry too much about it being perfect. Dangers of perfection. I'm going to grab some water and get some cobalt blue. Should suit the sky quite nicely. Okay. Let's bang some of that on. Like I said, you could get a wash if you wanted to to put some water down. Just like this, and then feed some of the pigment into it. Do keep an eye on if you've got any white clouds because you're probably going to find you'll need a tissue to start lifting that out. Also, consider the angle upon which your sketchbook is or your piece of paper, gravity is going to be pulling that pigment down through the picture. fun bring in a bit more more colour more colour uh, see that white cloud sitting up there so grab in a little bit <sighs> shall we do she says what does that blue look like oh that's a nice intense blue let's grab some of that as well while we're here a little bit more intense on this top corner. A bit of fun with it, don't worry. Okay, uh, I'm going to grab my tissue. You can see that I've got a few areas of white clouds. Uh, I'm going to just take those out. Very gently. I want to take it out a bit harsher, mm -hmm. make sure you've got a clean tissue and just dab it out. You may find that if the paper is very wet, it will run into anywhere that you've dabbed out and that you have to re-dab a few times while it's drying to get like Christmas. I can see here, just working that up a little bit more. Okay. Now it's run a little bit down here, which is good because I kind of have this plan. I think while it's all wet, it'd be really nice to do the trees. Now you can make it green if you want to. I'm just grabbing a bit of hooker's green because I'm being lazy. But an ultramarine blue will mean that you can make a nice tree green with a little bit of cadmium yellow. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of water. Put in a little bit of green up here so that it, it blends while everything's wet. It's lovely having that blend. And lack of perimeters is a nice thing sometimes with the watercolours. And because we've got those yellow flowers, I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow in there. Some of the yellow will be lost, it really doesn't matter. Just keep it all loose and free. I'm going to build in much more as I go along. Okay, now let's get a little bit of mountain tone in there. I think a nice bit of lilac would do well. So a little bit of a lilac-y tone. I'm not sure which lilac this is, I've got quite a few, you can kind of go by eye. 
add in a bit of ultramarine blue it'll exaggerate that distance and just paint in those clouds now if you paint them in and it's wet along here you will get a bit of a bleed just be warned it'll happen and you'll also get the bleed with the green we've got those trees going along and let's grab a little bit more of that greeny mix just up here and mix in with the lilac okay oh, we're going for it now aren't we we're on us well we're, there is no stopping so let's get that mountain colouring down here and we've got that yellowy shade of the bank. Now, just because I want it to be more of a reflection, I'm thinning out the, the shade with a little bit more water. I'm then gonna grab in a little bit of that yellow. Pull that across there like so. Let's grab a little bit of that cobalt blue again. Dilute it down and throw some in the water my brush hair is melting let's grab some of that green down here and you can see that run that's happening don't worry just grab your tissue take it out a little bit more of that green along here darken that down darken this down we're working a lot of wet into wet a little bit more of that mounting in the reflection right. and then we've got those yellow reeds just in the bottom left hand corner so let's bring in some of those as well now i'm going to add in a little bit of red to make them a bit more orangey down here Mountains. I'm going to take 
out some of the flowers so I'm going to build up a little bit more yellow and let's take out a little bit of bank along there which is going to be that yellowy land yellow grassland just over there okay take out a few clouds Right, so at this stage what we need to do is allow this to dry and then we come in and we start working up the soft pastels. Woohoo, I hate you water. Be patient or grab a hairdryer and speed up the process. I'll see you in five. Right, so now hopefully your picture is dryish, okay, which is mine is. Now what I've got here is a few different options for my pastels. I've got some very soft pastels, I've got some harder stick pastels and I've got some pastel pencils. You will find that if your paper has got a bit of a texture to it and you use very soft pastels, you will see a lot of the texture coming through. Now with the soft pastels, what you can do is you can put them down and then you can brush a little bit of water into it to smooth it out if you want to. It's completely up to you. You might find that you quite like the sketchy look and want to build that up. So what I've got here is I'm going to go in with some kind of softer, um, some stick pastels. Now if I play the stick pastels on here, it'll go over the top of the watercolour. Okay. If you want really strong, so there I was putting a white on and you can kind of just roughly see it. But if you use a soft pastel white, you will really see the white coming on top. So it'll give you a little bit more of a visual kick. It depends on what type of results you want. Now I'm right handed, so I'm gonna start working this down. The idea of this stage is not to obliterate all these beautiful bleeds and colors. It's to kind of work in with it and create a soft hybrid. So to start off with, I'm gonna look at doing some of these mountains. Um, if I grab some of the blue, I can start bringing in a little bit more detail on these mountains just to, to give it that idea and structure the form. Okay. Basically working up more of a linear take to it. Let's grab a little bit of a white. And then I can work that in to the layer of watercolour I've seen underneath so that I get a bit of a, a tonal shift. But it's fairly subtle. You can keep it hard and have much more of a crisper edge if you want to, with a stronger pigment. Or you can work it out and create more of a softer ephemeral effect. just like that. Now it's literally about working that up and building up more detail and playing around with your colours if you want to. You might find you want to bring in various greens and blues. I'm going to put in a little bit of blue in here which would kind of be nice. A little bit of sky reflecting on that mountain range. Like I said though, don't overwork it. It's incredibly easy to try and start to overwork areas. Create a balance. This stage is about mark making, looking at textures at the type of marks you generate and how you can build up the natural world with how you handle and move the soft pastel.
keep an eye on the pastels that you're using so that you know where you need to use them for other places. For instance, I was keeping an eye on this one, I did on one side, and then I'm now moving over to the other side so that the trees match the same colours. Now what you can do as well, which is an extra bonus, is you can take a paintbrush, clean paintbrush and add a little bit of water and you can blend out areas of pastel if you want to. Just to create more of that fuzzy reflection result you might want this lower section or maybe you want to you know buzz out some clouds in the sky it's completely up to you you can play around with it and you can move the pastel around on the surface the paper the water just like that as well so we've got some yellow flowers here let's grab some yellow pastels and start putting those in. Now I am being quite sporadic and random with my approach to these flowers. You obviously can be much more accurate because I'm just doing this quickly to show you. Once you've got those down, I might actually mix in a little bit of red. Now these are very soft. And then if I take a, a harder pastel, I can work that red into parts of the yellow to create the illusion of tone and more of a three dimensional. I could, if I wanted to, take an orange from the hard pastel and do it that way as well. It's probably a bit more controlled if you do it that way, but you know, it's completely up to you and which way you'd like to do it. You can always work the yellow back in and up your yellow if you find that you've gone a little bit too much on that side of things. Then we're looking at bringing in a little bit more green, so let's start working the upper round. And again, like I said, you, you've got to be a lot more accurate than I am. I'm just slapping this out real quick. just as a finishing touch a little bit of the soft yellow see that light coming through certain parts of the reeds there you go hey presto we're done now this was only a quick sketch just to show you how to get your teeth into doing something different make it your own play around find your own path don't worry about copying me this is just a starting off point for your imagination. Right, it's your turn. Go and have some fun. Bye, everyone.